In today's news, we see two men being charged in the murder of Catherine Pickering, another woman charged as well for aiding in the incident. The BVI Red Cross celebrates its 65th anniversary and now observing Red Cross Week in 2021. We also see the health minister being lambasted for offering free lunch in exchange for taking the COVID-19 vaccines. Well, the minister has since rep uh, responded he is unapologetic. Now, the disability services, they have received a much-needed donation. We have all the details of that and so much more after a word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 News. The wind. Oh. The is about this week. It's always a pleasure coming to you live and direct from the What's Papa? What's really good? Davis has Viewers, welcome. You're watching 284 News out of Total in the beautiful British Virgin Islands. It's Thursday, April 29th, 2021. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Javon Wilson. A terrific Thursday, that is. Yes. We are so happy uh, to be bringing you today's dose of local, regional, as well as international content right here on 284 News. Now, lots to get into. Big developments uh, in the case of Kate, Catherine Pickering, sorry, of course, the woman who recently lost her life in a robbery turn uh, murder. And we are now seeing that two men have been charged um, and the murder weapon has since been retrieved. The young woman who actually uh, aided in uh, concealing that weapon has been charged as well. Also, our health minister has found himself in hot water for offering $20 towards lunch for 61 persons in an attempt to increase the vaccination numbers here in the BVI. The minister, however, is not budging, adding that he is unapologetic about his approach in getting the territory vaccinated. All right, and state all your business, says the COI, writes to Skelton Claude Klein, Claude Skelton Klein, that is, as it pertains to its investigations and people committing crimes due to their circumstances, says Labor Minister. Now, government withholding tourism strategy uh, to maintain competitive advantage claims the premier of the Virgin Islands and the BVI Disability Services. They received a much needed donation. Uh, when we speak about corporate uh, sponsorship, this is a yes. public example of sponsorship. Miss mm -hmm. uh, Natalie Pickering, Mrs. Pickering completed a rotation with the Autism Center in 2016 and has maintained a keen interest in the work of the Disability Services Division. Uh, the division head, Miss Lorna Dawson, thanked Miss Pickering for her generosity and really stated that it was uh, a number of reasons that they were so thankful. Uh, the staff and members are so grateful for the gift. The stove will be used for their cooking sessions. BVI ses uh, services is a day program with the social development department that serves adults with a wide range of disabilities. The staff provides assistance in uh, independent living and social mm -hmm. skills, uh, as well as development through the activities, uh, including art, music, cooking, and gardening. Uh, the BVI Services Disability Division, that is, was gifted um, with a, a, a stove, and we're so thankful for that partnership. Jovan, you and I have spent a number of uh, hours uh, with the Disability Services, and we really understand the needs um, in a different, uh, a number of different capacities, and we're happy to see that someone, uh, a single person in the community, thought it fit to just gift them, and we appreciate that. Absolutely, it's certainly something we can all learn from. It just takes one person. Yes. Viewers, as we head right into our newscast, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Major Crime Team yesterday charged two males with murder and robbery, and one female with aiding in the incident. That resulted in the fatal wounding of Catherine Pickering back on April 18th. Now charged with murder are, one, Akeem Hopkinson, 22 years old, uh, that you're seeing uh, to the right of the screen, and Shamik Grant, 28 years old, uh, both of Zion Hill. Now viewers, both males were also charged with the possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life and jointly charged with Shamar Richardson for robbery in the same incident. Now the deceased, uh, Mrs. Catherine Pickering, was gunned down at her Parakeeta Bay home as she ran to the rescue of her daughter who was cornered by gunmen with intent to rob. The daughter managed to escape to the back of the home, but her mom, Catherine Pickering, was fired at several times as she tried to exit the front door to investigate what was happening. 
Now, viewers, like we mentioned, in addition to the two men charged, one female, Tyanne Smith, 20 years old, of Freshman Pond, was also charged with aiding offenders in this incident. It is alleged that Tyanne Smith retrieved the firearm from the murderer's home and stashed it. Smith eventually led police to the concealed weapon. Now, viewers, Commissioner of Police Mr. Mark Collins had noted in a broadcast just last week that his detectives were continuing to move meticulously through the inquiry process to ensure no stone is left unturned in this case. He said it was fully, he was fully confident sorry, that the officers in charge were competent, experienced, and knowledgeable. He said, and I quote, Earlier this morning, I was able to visit the detectives at the station and congratulate them personally for their diligence uh, in this matter. I am very pleased with the swift actions and work of these detectives. I also made a call to Mrs. Pickering's daughter to apprise her of the new developments, end of quote. Now, viewers, just last week, 24-year-old uh, Shamar Richardson of Jean Hill was also charged for his involvement in the robbery turned murder of Catherine Picker, and according to reports, Richardson was employed at the Big Brothers gas station in Bogus Bay, owned and operated by the family of the deceased, for eight years and allegedly made the call to alert the murderers that the target was on her way home. While he was charged for his role in the robbery, residents have been calling for the system to revise charges, adding that he is an accessory to murder and should be tried accordingly. Ron, such a tragic, tragic incident uh, as we begin to unfold what yes. has happened. Uh, more and more we're hearing about intimate details of what happened on this uh, dreaded night. Unfortunately, a woman in our community, a mother, Stalwart, a businesswoman, yes. uh, somebody who has contributed so much, has lost her life so aimlessly, so ruthlessly. Um, when we think about this case, we also think about the betrayal. The young man who uh, was being charged initially for robbery, Shamar Richardson, someone very close yes. to the family of the, of the deceased. And, you know, it really beckons the question, um, I, I think the reality rather, that we have to be so careful about who's around us. Mm. Um, but also, you know, it beckons the question, when did we get here as a community? Uh, to, the, to the point where, you know, we are seeing so many murders and it's happening uh, and being orchestrated by the people in our very backyard. Jovan, the sentiments and the details as they continue to be a fold are very tragic, but I want to, uh, uh, you, you mentioned about uh, who we're harboring, but I want to make an appeal to our parents, and I'm going to say this plain and simple. Mm -hmm. We are raising a generation mm -hmm. of unapologetic young men who yes. are ignorant yes. to the core mm -hmm. and do not understand the very core of mm -hmm. being responsibility of manhood mm -hmm. and it is about high time and that as a community hard. as working a community mm -hmm. and and it comes we talk about uh, a village raising a child and i must appeal to the parents and i'm going to say this uh, plain and simple i'm a new dad Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but I was raised by two parents who uh, continue to orchestrate and continue to really uh, decipher and speak to the core. Mm -hmm. We have to look now at the fact that we are raising monsters mm -hmm. and we're doing that deliberately mm -hmm. when we seek to really denounce and support the behavior of our young men. It has to stop. And, and I'm so thankful um, when it as an, as as mm -hmm. unfortunate as it is, uh, when we look at the details of this case, a life has been lost. That's 67 years of motherhood, of uh, of working and serving this community, and we cannot get that back. But what do we do mm -hmm. to change that moving forward? We have to take responsibility, yes. like you said, Ron. Uh, we always look to the other person to blame. We we blame, uh, you know, these type of crimes and the conditioning of the community. You know, sometimes we say, you know, you make your child, you don't, you know, you don't make their minds. But we have them. to yeah. take responsibility. One of the things uh, that is being highlighted about this case is one of the young men who was charged. His mother was publicly denying uh, that his her son had any involvement uh, in this situation. Yet charged, with, um, yeah. and and now we see. Uh, What's what's unravelled? It's un it's unfortunate, and again, it doubles back to what you said. 
we all have to take responsibility for the conditioning and the state of our men, of our girls as well. But of course, you know, we have to take responsibility. Right? And in the final analysis, we have to give kudos to the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Man. who have been able to orchestrate Absolutely. and to um, really put facts into place. Mm -hmm. A lot of crimes in the British Virgin Islands have gone unsolved. Mm -hmm. uh, we take into consideration even late of last year, a number of unsolved murders. Families have no closure. But in this instance, while it may not bring um, a full gratification, um, I do think both the family and a lot of the residents of this territory are thankful to the point that there is some level of closure as yes, it moves absolutely. forward um, to bringing this uh, to justice. The new commission, I know he came in with his hands full, but yes. he made a promise to the family. We will see this into fruition. And here we see uh, some level of justice being served. We will continue to keep you updated um, on the, you know, the details of the court proceedings and so on. But for now, I think uh, a win for the BVI. Indeed. Uh, viewers are still ahead. Uh, we are looking at the BVI Red Cross. This year, they are celebrating its 65th anniversary of serving the territory of the British Virgin Islands. The week of activities begin on Monday, May 3rd, uh, Sunday, uh, sorry, that is Monday, May 3rd to Sunday, May 9th, and will engage the public and community partners in a variety of ways. Director of the BVI Red Cross, Ms. Stacey Lloyd, she shared what the week of activities will look like in a previous interview held today. Take a look. At Red Cross Week, um, we took the opportunity to celebrate our 65th anniversary. And so we have a slew of activities. On Monday is our open house, and it's an opportunity for persons to come to our headquarters at Station Avenue and learn about our services, um, how we provide our services, how, learn how to become a volunteer, and to learn about the whole Red Cross, Red Crescent movement. Um, we're also going to be revealing our commemorative vehicle license plate, um, and it's an opportunity for the public to understand the design, the concept. And of course, it's, what, it's, a big, it's one of our biggest fundraisers, but it's one of those um, activities that everybody could get involved with by just purchasing a plate and having it on their vehicles to raise the visibility of the Red Cross and what we do. And then on May 4th, Tuesday, is, our, is Eslin Henley Day, and that's the day we spend with the kids the entire day we play games, we have lunch with them, we dance, we just have nice. amazing, amazing fun with the teachers and their, 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 their teachers and the parents if they so choose. And on the Wednesday, May 5th, it's a fashion and red show at um, Queen Elizabeth Park. And the whole idea is to showcase our different apparel that we have in our thrift shop. Our thrift shop is an amazing place where you can get gently used clothes, new clothes, and so we wanted to showcase persons, I mean, our, our pieces, so persons could have an understanding of the quality of items that we have. And on Thursday, May 6th, is the Volunteer Appreciation Ceremony. And this is the day where we show our appreciation to our volunteers who have gone above and beyond. As you mentioned, uh, Red Cross is a volunteer-led organization. Yes. So we can't do what we do without our volunteers who offer their support with asking for no monetary donation. They just want to be able to contribute to our vision and our mission and to help the most vulnerable. So on that day, it's their day. We honor them. We give them medals, prizes, trophies, etc. And on Friday, May 7th, we have our biggest event, which is the BVI Red Cross Emergency Preparedness Expo. And at that expo, we've invited different organizations throughout the territory who play a vital role when it comes to disaster preparedness. So we have insurance companies, BVI Tourist Board, BVI Department of Disaster Management. Um, we have Visor. We have um, a slew of different organizations. So that's an opportunity for you to come down and learn about disaster preparedness. Fire and rescue are going to be there. And we're going to be able to provide a live demonstration of how a um, disaster simulation is done. And so what we've asked is the public first responders um, to team up as teams and come out that day and join in the ultimate responder ch challenge. And that's an opportunity to showcase their first responder sk um, skills. And so I'm very, very excited about that to see our first responders in action. And then on May 8th, it's just a fit, get fit with Red Day. And so we're encouraging the public to come out and exercise with us. We're going to be doing meditation, yoga, 
and just having a very good, helpful day and practice health and exercise techniques. And on our last day, Sunday, May 9th, it's a mom and family day. So that happens to be Mother's Day. And Indeed. so we're encouraging moms to bring out the entire family, especially the kids, at the LTS Catholic School. Um, and there's bouncy castles, face painting, a slew of games. And you just could come out and have a good time with our volunteers and with your family. So we have a jam-packed schedule yes, next indeed. week, Ron. That was director of the BVR Red Cross, Miss Stacy Lloyd. Now, additionally, viewers, the week of the Red Cross activities, they will be honoring over 60 persons who have served as the frontline workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. In case you missed the full interview uh, with director of the BVR Red Cross on the upcoming Red Cross week, feel free to check it out on our website as well as our uh, Facebook uh, page. Viewers still ahead, a young Virgin Islander actor. He is set to star in an upcoming CBS Network drama series, Bull, and it is serving as so much inspiration mm -hmm. to young aspiring artists who want to make something of themselves. Follow yes. your dreams, guys. We can't wait to deliver the story. Our views, stick with us. There's Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, and our partners that hold us down. It's season two of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, taking you on the most inspiring journey with the best and brightest distinguished gentlemen of the BVI. Raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men like you've never seen them before. Governor Augustus J. U. Jasper, Jovan Klein, Neil Klein and so much more. Yeah. Turning modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen with yours truly, Ron Grant, a 284 Media production. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now some heated headlines locally. Minister of Health and Social Development Honorable Carvin Malone has received harsh public criticism over what he has dubbed his Jab and Dine initiative, essentially offering free lunch to 61 persons in an effort to ramp up the vaccination body count to 10,000 locally. Now, the minister's Facebook post stated, and I quote, 61 more jabs and the BVI will reach the $10,000 10, mark sorry, uh, today. So let's make this interesting. Free lunch, maximum $20.00. For the first 61 persons taking the first vaccination shots today at any facility on island or yacht within the BVI. Yes, free lunch. WhatsApp your name and photo taking your first job to 441-0332. The first 61 photos received will be entitled free lunch at a restaurant of your choice anywhere in the BVI. $20 limit again. Hashtag jab and dine. Do your part. Don't hesitate. Vaccinate. End of quote. Now, viewers, local residents were hmm. seemingly outraged, adding that the minister is toying on persons' vulnerabilities in the midst of this pandemic to meet a vaccination quota. Uh, by now, viewers, you would also know there is a very colorful voice note being circulated locally of a BV Orlando woman who said she's very insulted and upset that the government didn't have the empathy to offer persons or children food who are ordinarily suffering uh, from this pandemic but has the audacity to offer food in exchange for taking a vaccine that we do not know the implications of. This is based on what she has said. She also added that the public should feel insulted and demoralized by this, adding that this is not leadership. Now, viewers, despite those criticisms, the minister remains firm on his stance and has further defended his actions today in the House of Assembly. He said, and I quote, 
Let us be perfectly clear, fair, and truthful. They are persons who will never take the vaccine, and then they are those who require a bit more information before taking the job. While others try to convince you otherwise, my unapologetic mission is to provide more education to reduce or eliminate hesitation to vaccination. I am pleased to report that 112 persons voluntarily and without being blackmailed received their first job of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And by midday of April 28, the territory had reached uh, the 10,000 mark on its way to 17,000. In celebration of those 10,000 persons, I personally honor my pledge to the first 61 persons who submit their immunization picture to the number 4410332, hashtag job and dine, end of quote. Now, viewers, the minister closed out by saying, and I quote once again, why risk your life and the life of others doing it? Why risk your business? and the business of others. Why risk your job and the job of others? The choice, the choice is yours. There are sufficient vaccines for an additional 7,000 persons. Will you be one? The opportunity is here, but the choice is yours. Don't hesitate. Vaccinate. Now, Ron, I think we are really living in interesting times when you think about and really digest um, all that's going on regarding the vaccines, regarding COVID-19. I think... Um, Nothing seems ceases to amaze us at yeah. this point um, anymore. Clearly, a lot of residents are still very skeptical or hesitant about taking uh, the COVID-19 vaccines. And though the government is maintaining that it's not mandatory, I think this is the, also the government being very strategic about getting a certain fraction of the community uh, in for vaccines. And I think in this case, that may very, very well be the most vulnerable in the community who, uh, and I think persons who are really still struggling yes. um, in the midst of this pandemic. Jovan, I want to make reference to the Honorable Minister's comments, and he said, and I quote, let us be perfectly clear, fair and truthful. There are persons who will never take the vaccine, and there are those who require a bit more information before taking the jab, while others try to conceive otherwise. Pause. What the Honorable Minister did was not provide additional information, right. like he said. What he mm -hmm. did was... Uh, simply provide a, a, a bribery. And as a right. voting resident mm -hmm. of the 6th Electoral District, it is unapologetically, again, mm -hmm. insulting. Mm -hmm. You do not do that. Again, this is a case where this is a vaccine that is not mandatory. Mm -hmm. Persons have the uh, free uh, range to take it if you want. I could understand, honestly and truthfully, if the businesses, restaurants, like others, had said, a 10% or if you take the vaccine, there right. would be a 20% voucher. But for honorable minister of our elected uh, official to insinuate that, um, and it comes across as jarring. It comes uh, across as though and, you're, and that you're trying to convince and, and, and take his efforts outside of that and take his efforts and as well as the, the efforts of the honorable members of the house in trying to really put forward the fact that mm -hmm. vaccination is the best forward. I think this was a step in the absolute wrong direction. And as a voting member, that was uncalled for honorable minister. There's yeah. no need for you mm -hmm. to, especially in these times, like the voice note, which we did not go to because of the, uh, you know, the, the harsh uh, spoken words mm -hmm. of it. However, there are difficulties that are, are plaguing our society. Mm -hmm. Our schools are without furniture. Mm -hmm. We have students yes. who can't go back to school, honorable and, and minister. People, and people because still on one meal per day is so trying can, to make can, ends can meet. You, can you realistically put it into perspective? When we take the economic ramifications of the territory of the Virgin Islands, do not play with voting members. Um, Absolutely. And, I'm stepping and you know, outside. one of the yeah. things the government has said and reiterated several times is, you know, uh, a nationwide campaign uh, where uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars has been invested will be coming to educate the public about this vaccine and the vaccination rollout. We're yet to see that cohesive effort. And one. telling me that if I take the vaccine and I send a picture and I can get $20, that is not education. That is bribery. <laughs> That's, that, that is no way fit the, 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 the stereotype. So please, mm -hmm. uh, continuing on on the local scene over, though, however, in the U.S. Virgin Islands, very amazing news. And I am so honored and so thrilled to be bringing this story. When it comes to artistry in the Virgin Islands, I must tell you, young Virgin Islander actor Caden Hughes has a landed he's landed a coveted guest star role in CBS network drama series Bull which is set to air on CBS Monday at 10 p.m. Uh, network channel uh, that's channel 18 cable TV channel 14 the actor whose site is set on becoming a film director uh, got his really 
a big break after auditioning for the show both stars Michael Weatherly and centers around Dr. Jason Bull who is the charming yet cocky founder of the successful Trail consulting film uh, that really analyzes corporations. Bull and his team of experts employ psychology, human intuition, and high-tech tech data to understand juniors, uh, lawyers, juniors, uh, witnesses, and defendants who really construct effective narratives to help their clients in the court of trials. Now, viewers, in this upcoming episode, Caden takes on the role of Calcum Hartul, a young dreamer living in the urban landscape where bright futures are often hard start now making uh, choices that can change the trajectory of one's life in a lesson uh, this will essentially be a trademark and we are so proud uh, he said in an official comment I'm excited to be able to represent the Virgin Islands on screen in this way Caden, who is age 15, as an actor, he said, the audition uh, process can be challenging, but landing a multidimensional role such as this makes it so worthwhile with a strong leading cast to really include uh, Michael Weatherly, former uh, NCIS uh, fame, and Chris Jackson. Uh, Jovan, this is tremendous news, of course, coming out of the U.S. Virgin Islands, but I want to speak to our young artists who are across the Virgin Islands, who have always been told, who have always been discouraged, um, you have to do doctors, lawyers, you mm -hmm. have to stick to the 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, really, really amazing opportunity for persons to understand. Uh, viewers, if you have a dream, especially my young professionals, especially my young kings, if you have a, a dream, this is important for you to really uh, zone in on that, mm -hmm. uh, practice it, um, really learn your craft, mm -hmm. and in time, it might not come when you want to, mm -hmm. uh, but the ability to present your craft to the general public and to the world uh, will definitely, at some point, become available. Absolutely, and I love it. I love this story. At just 15 years old, yes. making such a big splash on the international scene. And like you said, Ron, it is really testament that once you believe in something, you stick to it, you hone it, you master it. Um, this is what happens. Yeah. Eventually it comes into fruition. And in the Caribbean, we have been so conditioned, like you rightfully mentioned, white collar jobs. If you're not a lawyer, doctor, you're not successful. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And that's that's why I love industries, even like the one that we work of in. Of course, Ron. it's Very a good example. Unconventional, un unconventional, but nevertheless marrying the appetite and the interest of our young people and we have to continue to to stretch our feet and i think this is why uh we, we continue to cover so many stories of virgin islanders yes. and persons from the caribbean making such a, a big splash on the international scene and it's really because uh they stuck to it and not necessarily to what's conventional in our community i want to bring reference to a recently another virgin islander over mm -hmm. in the usvi who recently won a grammy now this was not his first grammy award yes. um but he uh and i'm his name is missing me and i apologize but he again uh, really broke barriers mm -hmm. in winning another Grammy. This is a Virgin Islander who left uh, the Virgin Islands at a very young age and he was able to capitalize on his talents. Uh, moving on to really work with uh, artists such as Pharrell, Beyonce, mm -hmm. and most recently winning another Grammy Award uh, for his uh, award winning producing work. Mm -hmm. Again, an example of the artistry, the talent that lies within the Virgin Islands, both the U.S. and, and British Virgin Islands. And mm -hmm. we absolutely have to continue to support, encourage our young professionals uh, to really take advantage of it. We're so proud of um, Mr. Caden. Absolutely. And we see locally as well, uh, definitely some efforts being vested in our entertainment arts. Uh, but we want to continue to ensure, like you said, Ron, that they're well supported. I know the Department of Culture has quite a number of activities in the work. And in the coming weeks, we'll be speaking to them about those opportunities. Yes. But again, I think this is a remarkable effort and testament that it doesn't matter if we come from a small island uh, once we have a big world mentality. And that's all that matters. Viewers, here. if you if you have not mm -hmm. seen Bowl, uh, please do check it out when it comes out. Um, we'll be happy to hear your reviews and uh, see what you think of Bowl, this new CBS series, and make sure you support the young aspiring artist. Absolutely. Virgin Islands to the world. Viewers, that is all the time that we have today, but you can check us out via our website. That is 284media.com. We're yes. also on Facebook at 284media and Instagram as well as Twitter. We're all over the place, okay? 284BVI, Instagram and Twitter, very accessible. 
Uh, but for now, that is all the time we have. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Wren. It's always a pleasure. Happy Thursday to each and every one of you. Have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.